Likewise with some problems that I faced at work. You know Jokim, my partner, yes. right? So well, if he's, you a, ask, he's, a, he's a big problem, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Men Explain. I'm Sonia and today joining me to chat about something that I'm very curious about <laughs> because we're constantly moving into different stages of life. He's going to help us better understand how to deal a life crisis. And I feel like I'm talking to a therapist right now. Please welcome Paul Foster. Uh, Sonia, thank you for having me. Well, I, okay, I got to put my therapist hat on today. Yeah. Is that right? No? I feel so. No, you've got, you've got a lot of experience. I think that's yeah. what it is, right? And yeah. Paul, please let our listeners and viewers know what you're up to recently because you need no introduction. You're everywhere. You act, you host, you do crazy adventurous things. So maybe you can fill them in on what you've been up wow. to. Uh, okay, well, I guess the most recent project is Kamokakis, mm. uh, which we took o- almost two years wow. to shoot. Yeah. yeah, it was like I was serving national service again. That, that was Literally. a pretty adventurous one, actually. It was great. It was great. I was trying to pull you in there as one of my as one of my guests <laughs> for one of my episodes. I don't think I'll ever survive. <laughs> Not even a you, single seat. You'd be surprised. You'd really? Be surprised. Are you yeah, sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think yeah. you have too much faith in me. <laughs> Truly too much faith in me. But yeah. of course, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Um, and how has life been for you just in general? I'm always the optimist. I'm always the, the glass is half full rather than half empty. Yeah. Um, so for me, life is good. I think that's what we love about you because every single time I've met you in any occasion, <laughs> you've been like a ball of energy. You're always fun. You're always laughing and smiling. But of course, we also have our own moments where we reflect about life and we think and we worry mm-hmm. and overthink sometimes. Absolutely. In fact, the funny thing was the last time I filmed with you was for Let's Talk About Health, <laughs> yep. season one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back there for a little bit, yep. okay? So the episode that we did was actually about the heart. Yes. And you were sharing with me a very personal story, which then became uh, public information. Mm-hmm about your own incident mm. and your own brushes with health scares. Again, ironically, I was invited onto the show yes. with you guys to yeah. talk about heart health, but I had happened to go through a few kind of early health pre-screenings yes. prior to the, to the filming. Yes. So I did find out, obviously, that I had some blockages in my arteries. We were in the process of dealing with that, although at that point the cardiologist was like, no, it's nothing we have to really worry about yet mm. because we need to get your cholesterol down. The main, my main problem is cholesterol, so which is genetic. More, and you're in your late 30s, right? Uh, I'm point. in my, no, early 40s. So at that point right. I was 41. So last year you were, oh, I yeah. thought you were like 39 or something nah, yeah, 41, last year. Okay. going to 42. I mean, long story short, I had to do my invasive angiogram. I had to put four stents in, two balloons, uh, and get my cholesterol down uh, in order to to really resolve this issue now mm. that I'm younger, healthier, uh, and that can deal with the recovery now yeah. rather than doing it post heart attack or when I'm older and it takes yeah. longer to recover. So yeah. yeah. I mean, I I did see your stories and you know you did a very detailed yeah. breakdown on what happened. We're very glad you're all good now and I'm sure getting back on track. Yeah, 100%. Slowly. Yeah, slowly. slowly. But it also makes you think and wonder the kind of problems that you deal with in the different phases of your life. Mm-hmm. I mean, now that you're in your early 40s, you look back mm-hmm. sometimes, I'm sure, at your 30s and your 20s. 20s. Mm-hmm. The problems are all very different, right? Absolutely. <laughs> like, and you know, when we're kids, right? When mm. we're in school. Wow. What do you, you worry about, actually? Yeah. What do you worry you, about when we're kids? Small stuff now yeah. that we're older, but when we're a kid, they were massive. I, because I, problems then I know. Were, it's true. were mediocre. And that's why I, it's so cliche. You always think your parents are always telling you, like, <laughs> don't worry, it's okay, yeah. you know? Because. As a kid, you didn't have to worry about much, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm ashamed to admit this, but when I was in secondary school, I wasn't the most academically inclined. Mm. I only bucked up like in sec three or something. And every time I get back a really bad result, I will, number one, okay, this is is very bad example. But (laughs) back then, you always think like, oh my God, I could kill myself. Like I could really kill. But back then, when we were experiencing it, it almost seems the end of the world. That's it. It's yeah. relative. Yeah, it's, it's relative. It, our problems in life are relative to 
what phase we are in our life. Of course. Right? How, how we are living. Yeah. What's our support network like? General stuff. So like yeah. I said, as a kid, actually your parents did most of the worrying for, for yeah. you. Right? Yeah. They took care of everything. Yeah. You literally had nothing to really worry about except like, passing school yeah. which is also why that's why when that's you start why, to fail some subjects like you're like world. Oh my, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally the end of the world oh my goodness if I fail this I cannot go in to, to uni I can't yeah, get a good like, degree I, I can't get a you know, yeah, I can't, like can't get a good job no career exactly. oh my god and it's you're already over. thinking over. 30 Apocalypse. years ahead yeah. when actually it's okay yeah but of course you move in your, into your 20s and then things start to evolve a little bit right absolutely so I think for most of our audience watching this right now you may be in different phases of life mm -hmm. I don't know uh, we get comments coming through and we understand that you go through different things sometimes so in your 20s take us through what were you worrying about <laughs> I want to know Paul Foster by the way was a crazy party guy I used to <laughs> see him all the time out and about I was so, I was tell us I please. still can be but I'm very selective yes, now yes. so uh, wow 20s so what was 20s 20s was just finishing national service yeah. uh, going into university trying to get my uni degree and then deciding what career am I going to get into what am I going to do uh, and then coming back to Singapore and life for me kind of uh, played my hand early, mm, right? Okay. With the passing of my father. Right. Uh, when I was younger. So that was 1999. I was 18, trying to graduate high school. So at one phase in my life during high school, it's exams to pass my A-levels. It's dealing with my father being sick and his eventual passing. Uh, moving house. Mm and then preparing to go to national service. That's so much life changes <laughs> right. in one at 18, phase. At 18 years yeah. old. So for me, I grew up overnight. Yeah. I, I grew up- You had to. Instantly. You had I, to. I had no choice. Yeah. I had no choice. I had to be there for my mom and my family, but I also had to make sure I passed my, yeah. my, my exams or yeah. else, yeah, I couldn't get into uni. I could, yeah. right? that, that was my, my fear the spiral, then. The spiral, the spiral. That's yeah. right. So it, in a way, it, it's, Again, ironic, I had no choice. Just deal with it and just do it. Push through now, you know, hopefully everything will come good as it goes. So um, I always look for the blessings. Yes. I always look for the, the silver linings. But maybe that's why you have developed this mindset. Yeah. I mean, everyone always asks me like, oh, what would you change? Or would you change anything in life? Or what would happen? That's a tough question because it's like, if it makes you the person you are, would you really change anything? Yeah. But then if I was like, of course, I wouldn't have wanted my father to pass away so early, so, early yeah. so that I had more time with him and to learn from him and to, to live with him. Yes. Would I also be the same person I am today if, if that was the case? Mm. So it's, it's a very tough debate yeah. in that sense um, because I think throughout life, so by the way also, <laughs> throughout life, there will always be a crisis. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's early, in the middle, or at the end. There's there's always going to be at some yeah, point. There's always going to be stuff yeah. to deal with. Yeah. It's how you deal with it, which is the most important thing. Yes. So, I, I guess having said that, navigating through the twenties, I was kind of okay already mm. because I already dealt with a lot early. And don't mind me asking this: Did your friends understand, or did they not quite get it at all? Uh, yes and no. Yeah. Actually, yes and no. Again, great question. It it was kind of like uh, Paul gets it, right? Because he's already been there and done that. So, for example, I I think out of my my friend group, I was the only the second friend that had lost a parent mm. early. Mm. We I had one friend earlier than me, so in a way, as life has gone on, I've become that person that when a parent People go does to pass you. away, yes, people yeah. come to me or people ask me to talk to uh, another friend. Yeah, Everyone deals with everything differently. Yeah. But the moment someone can come to you and talk to you from real life experience, personal experience, they have to diam and listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're <laughs> right? like, okay, yeah. okay. Like, he, he's he, got the he, experience. He knows what he's yeah, talking he about. Knows. You know, and I get it when other friends are trying to help. But for me, I, I think I became that person, it, that, that, that counselor, therapist, yes, yes, yeah, in a the way. Yeah, the therapist kept yeah, someone yeah. in your group of friends. Right. And that spilled across every sphere of life. Yeah. Um, so I think friends did get it. I think I became uh, <laughs> that really grounded friend, that person that would, you know, be able to uh, 
be the, the, the light and the dark, the black yeah. and the white. I was very in the middle and able to, to manage both sides and everything. So the thing is, having experienced all that at such an early age, did your entire phase of your 20s, <laughs> did you see yourself as someone who could enjoy life a lot more mm. or you would enjoy the smaller things in life? Wow. That, Ooh, I like something... that question too. Yeah, so you know what I mean? Well, I think I give you the therapist yeah, oh, thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Think, yes. yeah. <laughs> I'm super not qualified. I have Don't my say. own problems. Yeah. But we all do. We, we all, all do. do. We all do, yeah. Um, no, I still think I enjoyed life. Yeah. Um, I, and, and I think you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Exactly. I think I enjoyed it even more. Yes. Because I knew how fragile it was. Yeah, you really I knew treasured, that, treasured yes, it. Yes, I knew that something could disappear. Yeah. Not just tomorrow. Like now. Today, I, again, looked for all the, the silver linings and the positives and the goods. And I, I used that as my, as my compass mm. um, to, to go out and, and enjoy things. And, and again, em embrace life. You know, Paul, thank you so much for opening up so early on in the <laughs> podcast. I was not expecting that. But thank you for digging deep and sharing such a personal story. Because when I look back at my 20s, suddenly everything seems so um, redundant right. <laughs> like, to some extent. <laughs> It's never a comparison. Of course not. Right? Yeah. Of course. We're, we're all different. We all live different lives. But I always say on a life journey, we're trying to find out who we are, right? Yeah. We're trying to find out ourselves. Yeah. It happens at different times. Mm -hmm. So... Actually, it could yeah, constantly it happen as well. And, uh, yeah, because yeah, we're ever discovery. evolving, right? We're, yeah. Yeah, we're growing, we're learning. But some people find our core selves early on. Right. Some in the middle, some at the end. And unfortunately, some never really find themselves. Mm. But maybe because they're constantly evolving mm. and growing yeah. so my question to you was besides you thinking your 20s was very redundant now compared oh. to me but was how was your 20s yeah. and do you think you have found yourself yet yeah you know um now now that you asked me that question i was still in uni right yep. and i was just getting started in this industry so i did uni and i think that's actually around about the time i yeah, met we, you yeah correct to be honest so I, wow, ages ago. So I was just getting into the media. Yeah. Uh, trust me, I did not know what the heck I was doing. Because in my mind, I wanted to be a journalist. Yeah. And I was very sure I was going to go like back end. I was going to do writing. You know, I wanted to maybe be a news journalist at mm. some point. It is an industry where you have to figure out who you are as soon as possible. Yeah. And I, I do pride myself in that because I think that especially as a host and a presenter it's not so much about acting I suck at acting so it's definitely <laughs> not one of my strong suits just gonna admit it right there <laughs> I think that essentially in the line that I am in specifically growing with me at the same time mm. and that in itself is a gift that I get to experience with you yeah, know, with everyone yeah. with everyone so I was more concerned about my career trajectory because I was juggling school and work yeah. at the same time yeah. and I think which is my, amazing by the way oh thank you yeah my I wouldn't do it again <laughs> but my immediate worry was oh, how do I pass my exams do well in my final project yeah. not disappoint my lecturers my parents and at the same time start this career yeah and I didn't even know whether this career was going to take me anywhere because yeah. let's be real at that moment I was just doing it like for fun mm. I didn't know that it was going to be a full-time thing mm. once I graduated you know it was just like throw it out there and see where it takes me yeah. kind of situation. So those were the things I was concerned about. And I'm a naturally competitive person. So I definitely want to really grab the opportunities that came my way. Um, I was very fortunate to have very supportive parents. Yeah. Both my parents came from media. So they've always been like, okay, you know, you do you, pursue your dreams kind of thing. They, they've always been so supportive, which I'm eternally grateful for because wouldn't be here without them yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah, those were the things I was yeah. concerned about. And I think, I like to think of life as in, in little bonuses. Yeah. So when you said like, y you, were, you weren't expecting anything. Yeah. But what a bonus it's become. Exactly. Because yeah. it's like, I also feel like, have no expectations mm. so that everything that you do earn and receive is a bonus. Was that yeah. a quote from Spider-Man? Expect what? disappointment. Okay, correction oh, even, from what? our producer. Oh, expect expect. Disappointed, uh, disappointment and you won't be disappointed. Wow, okay. 
That's a little dark, but yeah. Yeah, but you get my same, gist. Same, same gist. Similar, right? similar, yeah. similar, similar. And 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 for for those of you watching, if you don't if you don't know how Sonia started, <laughs> she actually joined the the radio DJ personality contest, yeah, co contest yeah, yeah, yeah. the competition, and her mentor was Roz. Yes, and, and that's Roz why... is a very old dear friend of yes. mine. Yes, and so you became one of the first friends in the media that I I met. Yes, yeah. because of the mentor yeah, mentee, mentee relationship, relationship. Yeah. and then I voted for Sonia because. Oh. I was listening. Oh, I was listening to her when they were, you know, putting them on air to test them. Are you sure Ross didn't them. put a knife to your head then? and like, you better no. work on my mentee. <laughs> no, she offered me a meal, la, which is also good. That's so yeah, sweet. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, the... but so I, I I had recognized you already earlier. Right. I was like, oh, actually, right. this, this, yeah. this girl got something. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, so she, she, you did, she did earn her spot. Well, and... you see, without the kind of support that I had, you know, with, <laughs> yeah, I didn't with even everything. know that. You need with right. everything like yeah. strangers, people I didn't even know wouldn't be here. But of course, in my twenties, I was also thinking about a lot of relationship stuff. Like, sure. I don't know about you. Sure. Did, <laughs> did you have a lot of like yeah. dating sort of situations? Uh, yes back then and no. I'm a very uh, committed long term relationship oh, guy, so I had a lot okay. of long term relationships. So you're a serial relationshiper in a way. But okay. when I'm single, oh, I'm here we go. Single. <laughs> so I'm not sure yeah. what that means. <laughs> right. So let me see. When I was in my twenties, so. So Are during, you counting girlfriends? Or? Yeah, yeah, like like during uni was like you know one long term girlfriend, and then early to to mid two thousands. Yeah. Became single 2006. Yeah, well, he and then, here, right? yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I was doing all the, so I was modeling back then as yes. well and working on my first. Oh my God, we need to put in a clipping of yeah. calls like modeling days <laughs> right now. <laughs> wow, well, yeah. long time ago. <laughs> and uh, starting my first business back then. Um, and then doing the modeling PR stuff, like the PR at the clubs, taking yeah. care of all the models that were coming for dinners and parties. Yeah. So that was my life, right? Yeah. It was like... Vibrant. Yeah, partying <laughs> like three, four times a week, hustling, like re the real... That was the real hustle days. Yeah. You had to go out and work. Yeah. You had to do the events. Yeah. You had to do, take all you the jobs. You had to show that you're yeah, there. Yeah, you, you had, had to, to network. network. Yeah. 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 So pre-social media, all right? So I, I always cut myself very lucky too that I came from the analog days. Yeah. I came from analog, transitioned through to the digital. So I kind of had the best of both worlds. Yeah. And you just, you had to work then. 20, almost 20 years ago, a lot of people that we were working with are now in positions <laughs> yes. where they're making the des decisions. Yeah. They're the ones that are, oh, you want to book Paul? Ah? Okay. Yeah. Just, just hire him. Yeah, yeah. Just hire him. Don't need to see the rest. Yeah. Because they we developed know. that working relationship and a personal relationship from that long ago. Yeah. Like you want to work with someone good. I know this guy is good. Yeah. Get him. And, yeah. and it's nice. It's, it's, it's come full circle. I wouldn't even full circle. No, so, yeah. so basically what you're saying is what you experienced in your 20s would have probably paid off in your late 20s or early 30s or to your mid 30s. 100%. Yeah. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. Yes. So yes. that is, that is the, that's the journey, right? That's the journey. Go out, meet people. Yeah. You know, establish it's, good relationships. Stay have, out and have, do it while have, you can yeah. survive on two hours of sleep. <laughs> yeah. Have fun. <laughs> hey, if you can survive on two hours of sleep, uh, you can yeah. work very hard later in life. Yeah, then, that's right? true. That's people true. People see like, hey, actually, yeah. I remembered what we used to do. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they'd be good to have to, to, to do a travel show. Right. <laughs> For, For example. Not, it's which, very demanding, by yeah. the way. Just letting y'all know. Yeah. I mean, you would know too. Yeah. Yeah. You, people see 45 minutes of a show that they're we've like, well, shot. good life, huh? yeah, you always travel for work, so fun. They say, wow, We're five like, days don't... straight on pushing 12 to 16 hours a yeah. day, traveling yeah. and filming, not easy. Yeah. But fulfilling. Yeah. So fulfilling and so much fun. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say in the 20s is the time you hustle, out, hustle yeah. make those relationships, have fun, enjoy. Yeah. I think that's a really crucial time. Figure out what do you like? What don't you like? Yeah. Develop your moral compass, you yeah. know, which we've already up until then always developing. But really, I think that's a time when you're uh, now a mature, mm. inverted commas. Hopefully. <laughs> adult. Because <laughs> you, now you're an adult, right? 21. Yeah. Yeah. You're an adult. You're now in the real world. Yeah. Your, your real sets of problems and life is going to hit you now. 
you need to go out and do you need to go out and do that shit you need to do so, it <laughs> so hopefully how we are looking at it now after this conversation is your 20s the hustling years mm-hmm. hopefully your 30s might be like reaping some rewards in some way uh, and you've done some growing up or yes how would you and describe no. your 30s? Y- yes and no yeah i'd say you start to reap the rewards yeah but i still feel in the 30s you still have to it's still it's still, that next, that's still, still that next hustle yes i think 30 to 35 so how do you is, get to the next level yes, is what you mean right yes exactly and so hopefully and people have the pressure of like oh i need to be in a stable relationship mm. or like because it's not just about career yeah it's also about the societal pressures like i, I know okay so when Especially i was in singapore exactly when i was in my <laughs> early 20s and i had colleagues or friends who were in their early 30s mm. they would start to worry because they see the rest of their group getting married or getting engaged mm. or like starting to have their first kid yeah and they're like stressing like oh like i should be there again no right or wrong right some focus on career yeah some focus on family the amazing people do yeah both and i'm like wow like that's that's awesome but i still feel there's no right or wrong there isn't but i I still feel like there's a bit of difference sometimes between men and women i don't know if you okay if you agree of course but for women i do notice them stressing out over you know they look at different phases of life as like i should be starting a family i should yeah. be doing this or oh, then what about my career like but i'm not sure as as a guy how do you feel about that what do you worry about biologically biologically yeah. men are very lucky yeah we don't have to worry about that but emotionally te- te- men te- suppress themselves a lot more uh, yes yeah or have the stigma that they shouldn't be showing emotion yeah. Yeah, which is now changing a bit. Yeah, you know, every, everything's changing, which is nice. I mean, you you touched on mental health. Yeah, earlier. So, yeah, there's always stigmas, but that's from society. Yeah, yeah, and all these um, worries that you have affect your life choices sometimes. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Um, but I I get it, but I don't think it's fair. Look, as a, as a guy, I'm gonna say I feel it's much easier. I'm just I'm just putting out there from mm. my perspective and point of view again everyone has to figure out what they want and how they want to do it i also believe like if you just if you just do you and don't go out and maliciously want to hurt someone or do anything bad so on and so forth then okay like like life is good right so yeah i I think it, it can be hard i think when you're seeing and again comparing i always don't compare. Comparison is the thief of happiness as cliche yeah, yeah. as it is. The grass is. is always greener. Yeah. Like, you know, and for me, so this is one of my philosophies. I never compare like equal or up. Right. Never. Okay. Because there's always going to be someone that has a better life than you in, sure. in, in some Come aspect. On. Okay, Paul, you know, in media industry is even more amplified. Sure. Because it could be, oh, there's going to be another handsomer, younger, right. more jacked up guy than me, like coming to the industry, yeah. going they're, after the same oh, segment. Right. They're, oh, they're yeah. getting all the work. How come they're working so much? Exactly. I've exactly. never been the jealous type to be like, That's oh, great. wow. That, no, good on you because I think that is one of the toxic <laughs> traits of this industry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really. Without, like people look at, yeah, without pointing too many fingers. Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It is a toxic trait. And sometimes yeah. you can't also blame people for feeling this way. I get it. It is a natural but, human... <laughs> Trade. Yeah. 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 But like everyone has to eat. Yeah. Everyone has to earn. And you can't do every job. So you should be happy for our colleagues. Yeah. I, I never and I've never looked at anyone as competition. Mm. I feel everyone is my counterpart and colleague because and we're there's all enough things to go, yeah, to go around. Like, and we all have our niches. Yeah. We um, there is so much, but you have to hustle yeah. to go and get it. Yeah. Maybe if you're not getting enough, maybe you're not hustling enough to a certain extent Paul is probably the king of hustlers like I see him do you can be like here and then you're there and then suddenly you're on my IG feed or like you're doing something I think also doing something right you're always doing something yeah Yeah, I want to do something something. yeah so never I never compare up but what I do is I compare down yeah and what I mean by that is I do a lot of charity work I do a lot of volunteer work so I always compare myself down Mm. This person, I'm building a house for this person and his family. Wow. Because they don't have a house. Mm. They don't have a roof over their heads, which is one of our basic needs in life. Yeah. So that for me is something huge. They can maybe eat once a day, twice a day, maybe not even three square meals a day. Yeah. We can eat whatever we want, whenever we want. Yeah. We have privilege. A lot of people think they don't have privilege. But we have a lot of privilege just being here doing what we do. And just being born in Singapore. Singapore for already, yeah. right? In general terms. So I always compare down. 
and there's so many more people mm. that don't have anything compared to to us. So and so therefore you, life is good. Exactly. You brought up a really good point. Do you think that the solution to dealing with crisis in different phases of life is to ground yourself in this manner and to get perspective? Because I see that, you know, you've gotten so much perspective from yeah. your charity work, helping be it animals, humans, whatever it is. Because then you get that beautiful perspective on life. Yeah. And suddenly your problems in any phase of life, it disappears. Small. Small. Yeah, shrinks, yeah. shrinks. Um, yes. I think being grounded is is key. So important, yeah. Being grounded is finding yourself. Yeah. So I think also the first thing you need to do is really find yourself. There's no right or wrong. You need to figure it out. But things will happen in your life that will help you figure it out. Yeah. And whether you embrace it, whether you avoid it or whatever, you know, will help you. And I always say, I think you need to love yourself first and know yourself first before you can then help others and be of use to others and yeah. have this selfless service to others which is what i managed to find quite early on which is great because yeah. i also always believe in the whole concept of charity starts at home because mm. if mm. you're not even kind to the people in yeah. your inner circle what's oh. the point of going out there and doing charity right. work right you and know? again doing it Selfless. Yeah, selflessly. Not without for, any expectations. Yeah, yeah. Not, for, not doing it for the gram. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're I literally... I completely <laughs> agree. Oh my gosh. You know, what irks me is that... I mean, it's good that everyone's you're still doing, doing okay, it's good. Still try and do, yes. But, but I feel but, like when there's so much publicity around it, I also question why yeah. this person is doing... Okay, right. but now that's a topic that's for another, that's, that's another That's a whole story. other thing altogether. But this was interesting because we saw a, um, a study that showed potential signs of a life crisis. And I'm going to read some of these symptoms out to you. <laughs> Tell me whether you think you've experienced it right. or you, you think that it's a sign of a life crisis. Yeah. So the first one, having a lot of regrets and a drop, a drop in life satisfaction. Wow. Have you ever felt like, oh, I regret not doing this. I regret not doing that. That's or, also quite hard. Yeah. I want to say no yeah. because I have thought I've lived my life to the fullest and enjoyed everything. But I think there's always a... At some point you might yeah, have... Yeah, there's always a seed of doubt somewhere that's like, ah, yeah. I, you know? I think for me, if that regret is, uh, um, for example, I can off the top of my head bring up right now yeah. uh, missed property investment opportunities. Okay. For okay. example. Yeah. For example. Even though I've done well yes. <laughs> in it, yes. I've missed a few that I was like, we start, you know what? Like, yeah. If only I had. Yeah. Wow. But it's like, it's okay. Yeah. Because you, you can still do more and you still make the most of, of, of what you have. But yeah, yeah, that maybe that's one example. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, regrets. Okay. Yes. And the next one is increased sadness and mood changes where you give up on your goals and you feel less motivated. Oh, no. Have you ever I, not I, felt? No. I feel like you've always been quite a motiv self-motivated yeah. guy. Yeah. I think that's what's got me through life. Yes. To be to be quite honest, yeah. um, it links. To, yeah. it, it does link. H having that again, that that confidence and motivation and striving and that that hustle and going. Not and then not just for yourself but for others. I think that's helped me um, um, define my life journey. So I want to say no for that one, yeah. which is a, probably a good one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I don't disagree. It's a no for me as well. Yeah. Um, generally, I am quite motivated, I would say. Also yeah. because I do want to provide a good life for my family. And to me, sometimes like there's no wrong in wanting a better life for yourself. So mm. if that's what motivates you, go for it. I love that. Yeah. There is nothing wrong with there is nothing wanting wrong a better it. life. Yeah. Yes. I mean, people are afraid to admit it because we're in a sometimes Asian <laughs> yeah, society. Yeah. We're like, oh, maybe I'd be a bit more modest. Okay. <laughs> Spontaneous decision making. Unfortunately, this one I have to say I am a little bit guilty of this. Okay. I do slip into phases of life where I do make regrettable decisions. Like I don't know, like I binge party, binge drink. But you acknowledge it. I do. I do. I recognize it. And do you learn from it? I, I learn from it, but sometimes it happens again and I That's wonder okay. why. So please, share your wisdom. You've been through this phase. Wow. I, I wouldn't say I'm out of this phase necessarily. Yeah, already. yeah I mean... I mean, still I, comes, I, it creeps back. Yeah, and I think that's a little bit of a wow, gray area again where what is life if it isn't sporadic? Right. I think, I think it's nice to have a plan. Yeah. I think it's nice to be diligent. I think it's nice to know what you want and how you want to do it, but 
life should also be spontaneous. Like so, you yeah. should have fun and do things. And sometimes it requires that that oh, you know, I'm gonna yeah. book I'm gonna book a holiday, a trip tomorrow. Or Oh my, okay, you know, mine oh, isn't so far fetched. <laughs> mine is let's get messed up today. Yeah. <laughs> like, also fun. Know. Also fun. And you know what? Yeah. Go get messed up. Right. Are you Okay, if I can quickly bring <laughs> quickly. up a story about this. Okay, so, sure, <laughs> early on in my career, also okay. when I was still doing all the the partying yeah. and everything, yeah. and we wait, we had lots of fun. Yeah, and my TV presence was starting to yes. to come on the rise. Yes, so it would happen. People would literally come up to me like, "Hey, uh, you should be a little bit more." Careful now, uh, you know. Don't drink so much, lah. Yeah. You know. Don't wait, wait, someone, to be uh, so wait, someone take picture or video of you. Now put it's up. even worse, right? Yeah, right, yeah. So back then, still no not so get, bad. I'm yeah, get, yeah. Not, not so bad, right? You know, because of this is, and I was like, you know what? But this is my life. I can do whatever I want as long as I'm not hurting anyone. Yeah. I always ask, who hasn't had that happen today? Right. If you haven't vomited from <laughs> drinking too much on a really big <laughs> party night out, you have, out not li- you have not lived life. <laughs> sure. But it, it does happen. Of course. But because but we're having fun. We're, we're with our trusted group of friends partying. Yeah. Sometimes you just, you have that one too many drink or you mix too many drinks. Right. And I, I still feel there should, have been, there should be no shame in that. There should be nothing wrong with that. I feel like sometimes when I look at the times that I, well, I really feel like I'm in a therapy session right now. <laughs> When I look at the times that I go um, haywire or mm. I'm a little unhinged, mm. I do feel like extreme guilt after that, you know? Because mm. you're always like, oh, why did I do that? And also, I guess it's the post-alcohol depression right, feeling maybe. or something. Um, which I think the, is a scientific... More, more being hungover. <laughs> that's, that too. A, that's the regret. The next <laughs> that day. Too, yeah. Oh my... And then the chemicals God, in your body are I feel like death. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah feel like why death, do I do this to myself? Regrets. Yeah. Then I feel like, oh, I'm in a, I'm in a crisis. I definitely, you know, feel that way. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel that for a lot of people who have control in most parts of their life, maybe that's just their way of like yeah. <laughs> letting uh, let loose. loose. You know what? Yeah. I'm not going to have control over this one. Like, yeah. I'm just going to yeah. have fun. Yeah. So and there's nothing, again, there's nothing wrong with having fun. Yeah. I think people should see it that way rather yeah. than the, uh, the, the, the negative that way. That is true. That yes. is true. Yes. So then, you know, leading from that and going into being, say, irritated with, you know, life choices or relationships mm. and all, have you ever found yourself in a situation where, at a different phase perhaps, you were frustrated with your dating life or your yeah. relationships? Yeah. Or it's not mm. where you wanted it to be? Because that could also be another sign of, oh, am I, am I in the right place of my life right yes. now? Yes. Yeah. So a lot of my relationships uh, early on as well kind of didn't work out because we, we started to grow and split our, yeah. our tangents. Yes, right? just don't converge anymore. That's right, right? We, we all, again, growing and developing at different times. I think the hard part is figuring out that perhaps you're not maybe meant to be with someone mm. or that maybe the relationship has run its course and maybe letting go of each other is the best thing to do so that you can both work on yourselves and grow at and the pace. Better. Yeah, at the pace that you're growing at rather than kind of holding back a little bit or being pulled back even unintentionally yeah. but being pulled back because you're not growing at that 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 same rate yeah, yeah. no um i think you brought up a good point because sometimes with a relationship with an age gap or a mm. bigger age gap mm. it does feel like the younger person has to play some catch up right and it or is, the older has to yeah or, slow down or, yeah which and and sometimes i worry like oh um is my partner already at a place where he doesn't want to deal with this shit anymore? Yeah. Like he doesn't want to deal with my shit anymore, you know? <laughs> so I better grow up faster. That, yeah. That's the feeling. But I also think, say, for example, from 30 to 20 is also very different from 40 to 30. Yeah. I think it becomes closer. The gap shortens yeah. closer the older we get because, again, we start to establish ourselves in our career. We start to figure ourselves out more. So every, I always feel like every relationship you're in, you should always, you're looking out for a better relationship. Yeah. If the last one didn't work for whatever reasons, the next one shouldn't have any of those reasons. Yeah. Like you're, you're trying to tick To more, eliminate the yeah. ones, the things that you're not happy about. That's right. Yeah. So, and I feel as you get older and you find these, the, this person or these people, if you're in, if you're still figuring it out, um, you, you start to, start to know. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And no one has the perfect relationship. Yeah. <laughs> There's always going to be pros and cons and stuff like that but that's life as well you, mm-hmm. you you deal with it 
and and you make the best of what what you have. Yeah. And what yeah. about now in your current relationship status? Yes. Like what do you feel is your biggest lesson in wow. this point or biggest learning point? L- yeah, learning point. I'm coming up to five years. Wow, yeah, yeah, five nice. Years. This is like the, besides my uni relationship when we were living overseas and having our own home to yes. live in, this is the also the first re- relationship uh, where we have, we've also had our own home. I think having that space is important. Yeah. Um, having a partner that can spend time and do a lot of things with. But, but also, also <laughs> do things on your own, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also is very important. You have to acknowledge that space. Uh, finding someone that you can really match with as much as possible. Mm. Yes, I think that helps a lot. That's why I wonder why people always say opposites attract. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I this know, needs I, to be I, another episode, by the way. <laughs> also, yeah. I mean, now that we're on the topic of relationships, um, you know, before we wrap up this whole conversation, I mean, when I look back at all my relationships from when I was, I don't know, 18 all the way till now, like what a journey because... What I wanted when I was in my 20s or what yeah. I thought I wanted yeah. is different from what I want now. Absolutely. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And you still have so much of your journey left. Right. So, I mean, so do right. I. But, yeah, everyone you know, does. We, yeah, we yeah. do, right? I love how uh, at one point we were talking, it was this like midlife crisis stuff. I'm like, wow, midlife, huh? Yeah. I'm 42. Mid- okay, yeah, is on that average. Midlife on average, right? Yeah. You know, if we hit the 80 to 100, okay. La. So, so that, that's the thing. I'm curious where that phrase even came up yeah. midlife crisis like it's termed at some who's point. the first one that came yeah. up with this yeah I like, don't know it's so negative yeah because again like I mentioned earlier our whole life is filled with crisis yeah. to, to be really honest whether it's big or small but it's all how you deal with it I've seen people crumble yeah and gone of, down a very dark path yeah after a crisis and I've seen others embrace it and come out on the lighter side Again, there's no right or wrong. We we will never know how to deal with something until yeah. you're literally standing face to face with it. But um, I, I think dealing with it is the most important. I agree. That's easier said than done, yes, I know. Yes. But you have to. I think if there's anything that I would share to wrap up mm. that that entire section is aside from having the mental grit to pull yourself mm. up, which is tough, tough. because sometimes yeah. you're like in such a dark place, you just don't know how to get out. Mm your immediate inner circle needs to be so strong. Yeah, support network. Because without them, you're probably going to find it a lot harder to climb out of a crisis. Be it midlife crisis, quarter life crisis, or whatever crisis it may be. If you've got that tight inner circle, I think it's going to make it so much easier for you to come on the other side. Can can I ask you, so if you had to face an issue, a problem, do you try to deal with it first Mm -hmm. and internalize it? Take a moment, however long it takes, before maybe seeking advice or counsel. Okay. Yes, that's me. I, knew, I felt like you are going to ask that question because I know some people who immediately, yes. like, guys, I need I, help. Like, Because growing up, I would only have my parents to confide so, in so yeah, if I had board. anything wrong. Mm. So I wasn't used to the concept of like having siblings or big groups of friends to confide in. So growing up, I realized that I would try and solve the problem first, actually, Likewise, with some problems that I faced at work, you know, Jokin, my partner, yes. right? So well, if he's, a, ask, he's, a, he's a big problem, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> problem child, you hear that? <laughs> problem child, that's you. Definitely, because we've been partners for a while, yeah, yeah. Right, you know? And, and we, we know of each other's lives yeah. and problems. Like, we see each other almost every day because of the show. If there's anything that's bothering us, it will have to come out because it will affect the show. For sure. Ah, uh, yes, yes, right? yes. So we would have to confide in each other. He knows that I'm the sort that would keep quiet about something like as long as I can until uh, I solve it. Then I'd be like, Joe, can you tell you? Okay. This happened, but it's all good now. And he's like, what? You kept it from me for like days? How <laughs> yeah. did you even? I don't know. That's just yeah. how I deal with the crisis. But that's yeah. that's me too. That's you as well. Yeah, yeah. I actually find it uh, one level deeper than you. Yeah. I find it actually much harder to reach out Oh, okay. I don't like to bog people down. Yeah, with your problems. Okay. yeah, in a way. So, but but if I really, really, really cannot solve and yes. I really, really, really need help, advice, of course. Yes. Of course, I would seek counsel. Yeah. There's never a right or wrong. Yes. I think as long as you are able to solve and 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 move forward and embrace and everything, I guess it doesn't really matter which way you do it. Yeah. But but you need to figure it out. 
yeah and 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 hopefully you figure it out in the in the in the best way possible yeah. yes well yes. thank you for sharing so much with us on this show yeah, I, I mean this episode it. became like a real <laughs> therapy <laughs> session I don't for think we have us. enough time we can a whole series on just a this a whole series <laughs> exactly and now we got like a few spin-off episodes as well yeah. do opposites really attract this yeah. one please take notes joking problem child <laughs> yeah. joking problem <laughs> child yeah exactly <laughs> once again thank you so much for joining us we appreciate it so much and thank you for tuning in to this episode of Man Explained yeah and if you have any questions or comments just leave them down below I'll be waiting there to reply (laughs) with my hat my therapist hat on exactly (laughs) and if you enjoyed this please like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time bye